Welcome back to Hemadroids.net. I'm just going to give you a quick demo of um, a new ROM that I put on there. Many of you may already be aware of a thing called Cyanogen Mod, and this is the Cyanogen Mod uh, 7 ROM. I put it on last night, thought I'd give it a go. There it is, a kind of cool uh, boot animation. Um, it's fairly easily applied. You can apply it using ROM Manager, um, as I did, or you can flash it if you have a custom recovery. I would say back up whatever your current ROM is. So I'd advise if you haven't already done, put a custom recovery on there. Again, I think you can do that through Clockwork, uh, through ROM Manager. You can put Clockwork Mod Recovery on there. You boot into that by holding Volume up and Power. Let go of the power. Keep volume up until the the recovery screen appears. Um, and then you can go to backup and just, just back up the current ROM that you're on. So, oh, I haven't seen that before at the bottom. What's going on there? Hopefully, that'll uh, the widget will load up properly in a second. Um, so, what's different? There we go. What's different about the Cyanogen mod? There's a few noticeable differences. Um, well, actually, sorry, what is Cyanogen mod? It, usually it's kind of um, it's a custom ROM that's developed by a, a whole bunch of developers supplying their own bits and pieces to make up the ROM. This one I believe is being led by Koosh, but someone correct me if I'm wrong, I'm fairly sure it's him that's posting them on XGA Developers. The version that I'm using right now is Alpha 3, although it is called Alpha 2. When you try and install it, you just forgot to rename it basically. So this was released, I think, on the 5th or the 6th of January. And... Um, I think Launcher Pro has crashed, give you one second, this isn't a Cyanogen mod problem, this is a Launcher Pro problem because that happened on my standard one and it'll be fine now. Um, so what are the differences? One of the first ones you might notice is in the notification bar. Um, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, uh, sound, so I go to vibrate, back to sound with airplane mode, I turn Bluetooth off. We can set these in the settings as well to be whichever we want. So you see here we have Cyanogen Mod settings. I'm going to go into that and I'm going to show you this one first before I go through. Let's provide I can find it. There it is. So uh, widget buttons, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound. You can have brightness, sync, Wi-Fi, access points, screen time, orientation, mobile data. Oh, that's interesting. I have mobile data in, so I've added that in straight away. You'll see on the right hand side there a lot of mobile data. So while we're in here, what else have we got in the Cyanogen mod settings? Um, you can allow them to be installed in different locations, internal, external, or automatic. I'll leave it on automatic. Uh, Performer settings gives you a warning there because you can do some damage mucking around with these. So I've locked into memory the home screen of my messaging app. These top two are automatically highlighted when you start. Um, what else do we have? Oh, actually, if I can find it, obviously trackball wake and stuff doesn't apply to the Nexus S. What I want to find. It's not the performance, where I've already been. Oh, actually, yeah, sound settings. So in there you can um, set it to always play your ringtones on the speaker. I assume that means if you've got your headset in, it still plays out of the speaker. You can change the volume attenuation. So ringtones, you can make them a little bit louder, so I've moved it to eight for ringtones. Um, you can enable quiet hours, you know, time that it, will, it, won't, uh, it won't bother you. Now, sorry, I need to find basically what I'm looking for. There's a bit that enables you to. It's going to be this one actually. There we go. Automatic backlight. Um, now, first of all, you get one at the top here. Um, apply moving average filter to sensor data to reduce flicker. So I think that means instead of reading it like instantly, what the um, the light meter reads, it takes an average over a certain time. What I'm after is this one here, light levels, use custom, screen dim level, oh that's not what I want, sorry, edit other levels, there we go. Now this 
looks a bit confusing at first. Let me break down what I th believe it means. So, at the top here it tells us the the 255 I think is the light sensor. I don't know how I can affect that. I'm not entirely sure where the light sensor is. That tells what it's at and we can then, down the left hand side, what it's saying is from 200 to 399 on the light sensor the screen should be 45 and the buttons should be on basically. It's kind of an on or off situation with the buttons, 255 or 0. Now I've already dropped these down by 10 because generally I find the screen very bright but if I wanted to go even dimmer, let's go to 35 and 50 60. Now I'm going to hit save and apply, watch, hopefully the screen gets a bit dimmer. And it didn't do anything. Why would that be? Let's try coming out. Um, I don't know why that is, because when I did it just now before recording, I could visibly see the screen get dimmer. Are we on this one at the moment? Sorry, I didn't even think. Oh, maybe I can't get any lower than that. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that. It did just get slightly dimmer. Um, obvious uh, help with that is that it will save battery. So a lot of people always say, oh yeah, turn your, turn your screen down to 20%, 30% and you'll save loads of battery. But the problem is, then when, it does, when you do go out in the daylight or some bright light, it's still at 20, 30 or 40 or whatever was you said it at. So by changing the uh, the automatic backlighting it still adjusts itself depending how bright everything else is but it will be dimmer than it would from the from the standard backlighting. So what else does CyanogenMod bring? I quite like well, what I should start with, one of the things that annoys me is for example Fancy Widget Pro. Normally it takes up almost a whole roll of all the different types of widgets it has. Folder organizer is the same. Now I don't know if you can see Fancy Widget Pro, five widgets, folder organizer, six widgets. So basically it groups them together for you. And when I go into Fancy Widget Pro, then I choose which one that I want. Or what was it when we looked at folder organizer? There they all are. So it's kind of layered, it's leveled the uh, the widget groupings, which I think is brilliant, I love it that way. Um, I didn't even realise I left that installed. But you know, you have some things that take out so many widget options, it just clogs up your choose widget selection area. Look at that widget soid, widget soid, 12 widgets. So they used to be in, in your whole stream and now they're all, you know, it's a very small difference but for me I really like it that way. Um, one of the other sort of final things I'll just show you quickly is um, it's actually in the settings, but you can add it as a widget. If I let me show you quickly, is a it's called a rendering effect, uh, render FX widget. So you select what effect you want to apply. Calibrated. Let's try that one, and then add widget. And there it is. And when I tap it. If you notice the difference there. So the one on the left hand side gives it like a night mode. So it's only the red LEDs are being displayed. Everything else runs exactly the same. And the one on the right, well that's interesting, the icon's changed afterwards. I don't know why that is. Um, the one on the right, I don't know what that one is, I haven't used it before, but again, it's just a, it's just if you're really like a battery freak and you're just trying to save every single little bit of power if it's if you're just reading a book or browsing the web a web page the red screen apparently um that's interesting we have to just touch the notification bar to make that turn red the red screen uses a lot less power because it's only using certain pixels um i assume that's still the case on the super amoled but i'm not uh, that technically uh up on things to know if that is the case. 
So I know a lot of people say, oh, why on earth would you want to do that? It looks ridiculous. Yeah, it does. But if you're only reading some text, if you're, if you're reading, uh, you know, an e-book, if it's going to make it last longer, why not? If you're watching a film, no, definitely not. But uh, it's good to have the option there. So I've waffled on for quite a while. That's Cyanogen Mod 7.0 on the Nexus S. Um, ask any questions in the comments, I'll try and answer them. I'm not an expert, I'm just giving you a quick look. Thus far I've not found any bugs, I've connected Bluetooth and played music, I've used GPS, um, everything seems to be fine. Uh, you know, give it a go if you're one that likes to, to tinker. And if you own a Nexus S, I would imagine that's you. Sound your mod 7.0. Uh, the link will be on the website on hammerjoys.net of where to look. My name's Andy, hammerjoys.net.